Hey, listen, who's Frank Green? And what does that have to do with the French press? Find out here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saugatuck, and welcome to the Obus Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about the French press. And I've done an episode on the French press before, but I've got one little extra trick today. But we'll post the other one up if you want to take a look at it and see what the comparison is. But today we're talking about a French press made by Frank Green. And, you know, we have folks inside Big B Coffee that do product reviews and merchandise ideas and so on. And just the other day, Jeannie called me up and said, hey, Bob, would you take a look at the Frank Green French Press? So I've been living with this for about a month. And I got to tell you, I love it. I love it because it's insulated. And that's the big difference between this French press and the Bodum French press. This has double wall construction, and once you make it, it'll stay hot for hours. But I also wanted to tell you about Frank Green. And Frank Green is not a person, it's a company. And it's almost like they want to say, we're green, frankly, uh, because their purpose is to eliminate single-use plastic products. That's sort of their mission. They make travel mugs and all sorts of products. I just happen to be reviewing the French press. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a French press. In order to do that, we just got to get started. But, you know, one of the first things that we always do whenever we make coffee, if we're doing it in the vessel that's at room temperature, we want to preheat that. And I've got some uh, water on the boil already. And so I'm going to put that in our container and just give it a chance to heat up a little bit while we prepare our coffee. And, you know, we're going to use the typical ratio of 30 grams of coffee for 500 grams of water. Now, unfortunately, this only holds 400 grams of or 400 milliliters of water, so we have to adjust down to 24, right? It's about six grams per 100, if you're figuring it out that way, or six grams of coffee per 100 milliliters. The milliliters and grams in water is the same. So let me go ahead and get the coffee going. I do have my airscape here. I was just taking off the lid when you came in. And I love the airscape. I've talked about it before because it seals in the air. And I'm going to be using Bigby Best coffee today. So let me go ahead and get my scale started here. And we're going to weigh out 24 grams of coffee. And I assume I'm at about 17.7. And now? 26. Well, that's too much. We need too much. we need 24. 24.1. Well, I think I'm going to leave it right there. And I get to keep my coffee fresh by giving it the lock and getting this lid on there. This just does such a great job. By the way, uh, you know, a lot of Big B merchandise, including this and these mugs for Mother's Day and so on, you can always find them on BigB.com. And then hopefully we'll have this in BigB.com someday too. We love this Frank Green product. Okay, I am going to dump this water and put this lid back on to retain that heat. It's double wall, so I'm not too worried. I'm going to go ahead and grind my coffee. Now, you know, in French press language, you know what, I already have some pre-ground, so I don't have to go too far in that, but it's 24 grams in. But hey, what's the coarseness here? Well, the coarseness of a typical French press, they say, hey, make it coarse. But with this method we're talking about today, you don't have to make it coarse. It could be an auto drip. It could go all the way down to maybe a pour over kind of grind. I mean, getting finer and finer. And even though the mesh of the Frank Green 
uh, I'm talking about this part of the screen is about the same as the bottom. We almost don't even need this mesh the way we're going to do it. All right, so I can actually feel the heat inside this mug. I'm gonna get the mug right on and I'm gonna tear it out and we're gonna get our coffee in. And we're saying we want 24 grams of coffee. And let me make sure that it's about 21.6. 25, 23, 24, 23, 28, 24, 0.1, 0.2, 0.2, okay. And I'm going to have you get in a little close and, and maybe you can get a sense of actually how fine that grind is. Pretty fine, right? Not typical for a French press, but that's the new trick we got here. All right, now we got to get our water right on top. We're going to tear out again and 24 grams of coffee. 400 grams of water. Now this is kind of a dark roast, so we're gonna go not at 205, but something closer to 197. The darker the roast, the lighter the temperature on the boil. We might cover that a little bit more later. I gotta hit that tear button one more time. And we're gonna get to, a, what am I at? 25.5. Okay, and when that gets to 50? 43. All right, oh, shoot, I gotta hit my timer. That's okay. Don't panic. But what I'm doing is putting enough water that's about twice the amount of the weight of the coffee that's in there because I'm looking for a quick bloom. Uh, and that just lets some of the gases get out and I want to sort of fully hydrate the beans before I add the rest of the water. And guess what? I still haven't set a timer, but I, I'm going to set this timer instead. There we go. And we're going to pretend that about 30 seconds have gone by and now we're going to look for it to go up to four minutes but we're going to get this other four the other milliliters of water until we get to about 400 grams ah, i'm dripping water all over the place and 300 you know, it's really hard to pour 80, fast out of a gooseneck because it's made for a pour over. 80, 95, four, 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 417. 417, it's a little bit over. We're not gonna panic on that. Okay, now from when I first started uh, pouring water in, even with the bloom, that should go for 30 seconds. And then it should go for another three minutes and 30 seconds beyond that. So a total of four minutes, uh, but you'll help keep an eye on this for me because it's supposed to go now to 330, right? I made a little bit of a, a snafu there, right? Okay, so all we're gonna do at this point is let this sit. We don't need to even worry about scales and stuff like that anymore. We're gonna let that sit and we're gonna stir it at the end of that four minutes. Now, I just wanna talk a little bit about grind and when you taste this coffee at the end, there's some things you could adjust on the grind. So for example, if when you got to this coffee, and this would be a coffee that you know, like for me, this is Bigby Best. If I had gone too fine, I would note that it tasted bitter or unusually bitter, and I would want to coarsen up just a little bit. On the other hand, if I tasted this and said, you know what, it has a little bit of a sour note, then I would say it was too coarse, and I'd want to fine it up a little bit. The other sort of uh, metric, now we're always very careful, six grams per 100 grams of water, six grams of coffee to 100 grams of water. But if we weren't measuring on a scale and we were eyeballing it, the other thing is if this tasted hollow, what we would know is that we didn't use enough coffee to the water ratio, right? All right. Oh, I've got the timer over here and I'm asking you to keep an eye on it. How ridiculous is that? All right, you know what? I'm actually gonna call this, it's very close at four minutes. And here's the next step, okay? So four minutes have gone by. And what we need to do now, because what happens in this kind of immersion method, and by the way, any French press or any time you're taking grounds and letting them steep in water, not pour through it. If it pours through, that's called percolation. But if it steeps around it, 
that's called immersion. We have an immersion brew here. But what, what the coffee grounds want to do is they want to all float to the top. And that's good. Uh, that actually happens when we, when we cup coffee too, when we're sampling for flavor and that kind of thing. But what we want to do is knock those grounds down. We literally want to knock them, knock them down. And the way we're going to do that, and this would be the same thing as in a cupping, is we're just going to give it, and you can see how thick this is on top. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. And what that's going to encourage is for those grounds to, by gravity, now want to float to the bottom. But you can also see now at this point there's something on top, a little foam, right? We call that scum. It's not very pleasant sounding but we do want to remove that scum and we're going to take two spoons and use the spoons to get rid of the scum and this will improve the taste of any french press if you do this or really any immersion method that's right okay now at this point we're, we're kind of all set. And what we used to do at the end of four minutes is put the plunger back in and plunge it. But here's the new trick. We're not going to plunge. We're just going to let this sit for five minutes. And if we let this sit for five minutes, all the grounds will float to the bottom. So we don't actually have to have the screen push the grounds down. The grounds will float down there all by themselves. It won't affect the flavor of the coffee. And if it does, it'll actually just make it better. And the beautiful thing in this Frank Green mug is it's insulated. So that five minutes, we're not going to lose any heat either. So I'm going to see you in five minutes, but in our video time here, it'll just be a couple seconds. See you in a minute. All right, so we're back. And it's been uh, about five minutes that this um, uh, French press, the, the grounds have been uh, drifting down. When I say I've been living with this for about a month, uh, this is exactly the way it's happened for me, right? So I make the product, uh, I give it a stir after four minutes, clear the scum off. Uh, but then I just take it to my workspace where I'm working and I let it sit for that other five minutes. And when it's ready, uh, I can either leave the plunger up, but I always worry that I'm going to somehow karate chop this thing over. So I go ahead and push the plunger down. It's not hard because all the grounds have already floated to the bottom, right? And um, just to give you a sense, I brought my uh, thermometer with me. And the reading on this is still, give me a second. Yeah, this is about at 180 degrees. So, I mean, I could still walk away and do something else and, and have a, a fine hot cup of coffee right here. But uh, you'll, you'll see when I pour it, it's, it's a nice pour. Here's the other thing. I've got 400 mils of coffee right here. And I don't always like to fill my cup full. So I'm going to fill it about a third full and keep the rest hot in here, right? Rather than let it get all cool in the cup and so on. Anyway, let me see how it turned out. Oh, I mean, beautiful, awesome. I, I love this method, I love this product. Well, that's all we have time for here on One Big On In Space. But I wanna leave you with one note, and that is, if you have any comments, leave them down below. <laughs> so whether you agree or disagree or if you have any other ideas please do that go ahead and hit the subscribe button but the real note i wanted to give you is when you love the world the world will love you right back hey thanks for joining us for future episodes click the subscribe button bean basics is brought to you by one big island in space.com with two g's